Got a question from She Green. Hi, She Green. Okay, and this is a long, she wrote long, so just bear with me. I'm going to read it. Okay, important question for you. Uh, would love a bit on it if you like. The info about the vampiric threads of energy was, wow, fascinating. I didn't know it happened with everyone you meet on the street. I think I'd heard of threads of energy between people who love each other. Yeah, you wouldn't have heard from that because most of the people who see that, they only see the big old whopping ones. They don't see the tiny, tiny ones that are just Let's say you pass somebody in a car and you happen to glance over and you just smile at them. They wouldn't be able to see that. It's really small. But it still exists. It still exists. Okay. Back to the question. I think I've heard of the threads of people between people who love between people who love each other, but I hadn't heard they were vampiric. Oh, they're very vampiric. How do we exchange loving energy in our major relationships? Well, you don't. <laughs> That's the quick and easy way of that one. The answer to that is you don't. You don't need to. Uh, when, you, when you've got two loving, healthy beings, human beings, that come together in a truly uh, unconditional loving relationship... If you're needing to exchange energy with them, that's a condition. So it comes right out of being unconditional love. It, it just comes out from right smack dab. You've got, you've got conditional love. If you expect or need in any way, whatever you want to call it, you expect, you want, you need, whatever the word is. If you say any of those words because you want it exchange love uh, then you are in a vampiric relationship both of you are okay and that's not 5d and that's not unconditional love in unconditional love you are love you are love you you don't need to exchange it with anyone you are love and when two beings that know that they are love come together they're more like they they coexist in kind of a closer energy bubble than the rest of the all that is that is love is in so you kind of put yourselves together in a bubble but you don't vampirically feed off each other you don't exchange love that is a silly concept on the other side. Nobody would even comprehend that statement on the other side. And the other side thinking is what we're getting to in 5D. In that, that would be like exchanging breathing. Well, I, I, need, to, I need to breathe with you. Well, no you don't. You breathe on your own. The same thing is true with love. It's the same thing as breathing. You breathe on your own. You, prov you provide your own oxygen. You do that yourself. You don't need somebody else to do it for you. And that's the same thing with love. You are love. You, everyone is that already. They just have forgotten the energy that is that unconditional love that you already are. You've cut yourself off from it by your belief systems. So you think, oh, okay, well, I'm going to get this mate. And in this, with this mate, we're going to exchange love and we're going to be better off the two of us for it. Well, how does that make any sense at all? That means that I'm lacking and you're lacking and the two of us unlacking people will somehow come together and form non, two non-lacking people. That makes no sense. It's not logical. And for a, a bunch of people that thrive on their logic, sometimes the, the uh, things that you guys believe in are just so illogical in your just basic premise in your basic premise okay so hopefully that answered that um how do we exchange loving energy in our major relationships spouse daughter friend family member etc energy i'm sure you do it properly with your daughter yes i don't exchange it at all there is no exchange between Stephanie and me. I don't need to give her anything. She doesn't need to give me anything. We, uh, 
love each other, but we don't give each other love. But we can state that as a fact. I love her. But I have to honestly say that I don't love her any more than that chair over there across the room. I don't. And I really don't. The difference is that when you're dealing with humans or the planet, I prefer to be in her company. Absolutely. But I love everyone and everything on this planet because it's a part of the all that is. It is me. I am it. To not love it would be like slamming my own hammer, uh, hammer down on my own thumb or cutting off my own arm. That makes no sense to me at all. That makes no sense to me. I don't love my my thumb more than I like love my my toe. You know, I don't love one of them more than the other. They are all a part of this body and I love it all. As do I love everything in this in this reality. I have to love it all. I love Gaia more than you can even imagine. I prefer her company when she is not playing games as a planet. So everything that's created from her, which is your body and everything else around you, I love, absolutely I love. But I don't love it any more or less. I just prefer the form that some part of the, the parts that I love, I prefer being in the company of some versus the company of others. I prefer the country to the city. I prefer, um, oh, kind of laid back people country people more than city people and I've lived with both and I've had fun with both but I, I, I love going into the cities for the music I love concerts and prefer I prefer city people in con concert mode or any kind of a show they, they are at their best or any kind of party I love the cities for that because humans have a lot of energy that they put forth and when they're in a good mood it is awesome and I prefer that but I don't love anything or anyone more than an, than another. I couldn't do that. I would have to say I just prefer some people to hang out with more than other people, mostly because of the games that they prefer to play. And I don't prefer to play those games. That's all. Okay. And, okay, I am sure you do it properly with your daughter, and I'd love to know what you do. I don't do anything. And that's the joy of having complete people. And I am far from being complete. I'm still royally messed up. But I am far enough along in this that I know better than to, to expect that kind of love from anyone. It will fail. It, will, it is doomed to fail. If you expect that kind of love from any um, person majorly, your parents, your child, your your uh, significant other, anyone that you expect to have a certain kind of love that you've got a certain kind of love with, number one, that's conditional love because you expect it to be a certain way. And eventually you are going to fail them or they're going to fail you because you do not know what they expect from you in that conditional love scenario. And you, what you expect from them will change all the time too and they will never know it. So it is doomed to fail. Absolutely will do, is doomed to fail. And that is shown all day long over and over in human life. And I don't understand why people don't get it. I mean, parents have falling out with their kids. And kids have falling out with each other. Family members are a disaster. Divorce is at the highest rate ever. Whereas, you know, there was something to be said for arranged marriages where the parents understood what the, their child was into and they would come together and they'd say, okay, well, my child's into this and your child's into that. This is probably going to be a good pairing. And it was accepted and there was no bells or whistles. There was kind of this understanding that you get used to each other and you respected your parents and so you trusted them to understand what you really like to do so it became what I believe in uh, you prefer their company rather than all these well you've got a need that I've got to fulfill and I've got a need that you've got to fulfill and that will never work guys never 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 and anybody that all the young women and all the young men that I have talked to I've tried to tell them that 
I've tried to tell them that when you become capable of taking care of the love that you need from yourself, that you fill those holes yourself, then you will run into a guy that does the same thing, and that's when you have the perfect relationship. There's no pressure there. There's an ease there. With the ones that are being set up now, especially in America, it's really bad in America with all of the Prince Charming Save the Damsel in Distress stories. I mean, it's just ridiculous. You don't want that. Because if you want a guy that comes and rescues you, and then women go get those guys, and then they go, and when the guy, they grow up, and a woman doesn't want to be looked at as a damsel in distress all the time. She wants to see that her man is supporting her in her power, in her strengths. But they can't do that because you you pick them for being the knight in shining armor. All they know how to do is to save the damsel in distress. So they want you to stay the damsel in distress. Well, women grow and they don't stay damsels in distress. They get older. They get wiser. Yeah, I did that. I, I was, yeah, I'm a classic example of that. And I guarantee you it will never work. So, uh, yeah, you don't have those kind of relationships with anyone. You don't need them to be anything for you. And you teach them that they don't need anything from you either. That they are powerful creator gods and they don't need anybody. Never have, never will. And let us come together as powerful creator gods, not needing each other in any kind of way. Not any kind of group. We are the biggest group. We are a bigger group than you could even imagine. And it is way bigger than Boy Scouts or Phi Theta Kappa or secretaries or men or women or black or white. We have got way bigger groups, guys. Way bigger group. So we are a group that is unstoppable. And you are a part of it. And you are plugged into all of it. You do not need to form these fake, un very, very conditional loving relationships that are doomed to fail. Okay? Yeah, I'm sure that's exactly what you wanted to hear. Alright, moving on. But I am not known for telling people exactly what they want to hear, am I? I'm pretty much a blunt truth person. And uh, considering everything that's failed, of course it was meant to fail because you needed to get to 3D. A lot of people wanted to play in 3D. But, uh, yeah, we're done with that. Trying, time to come out of it. I'll slap you across the face and go come to your senses. Um, let's see. I think I've removed threads before, but only with people I knew I wanted to cut ties with because I'd never see them again. Okay. <laughs> All right, <laughs> there is a difference between us being all tied together and loving, unconditional loving connection that ties us all things together. Unconditional love is what the energy that ties us all together into oneness. But it is not, that is a completely different energy. You cannot, if you wanted to, cut anyone, any person, place, or thing away from you from that perspective at all. You are tied to all things, everything, period. Everything around you knows everything you've ever done, felt, thought, period. End of story. You'll see that one day. They won't care either. Whatever you did, they'll they'll find it fascinating. And just like anybody watching a video game, they'll find it cool and fascinating. It just upsets you now. But you cannot cut that unconditional love that ties us all together. What you can cut are the unhealthy vampiric lines. And those are lines that you do. You, nobody can come and attach something to you against your will, ever. You have to be a part and party to that. So it's you attaching to the person, not the person attaching to you. Now, that is people on this planet. The entities in 4D can attach to you because the, the geckos will do it with mechanical means 
with machines. The pigeons will do it sneakily. They do it usually with religion. And they can attach, but that's really... Both of those, you have to have some sort of agreement. You have to agree in some way. You, know, you have to agree by uh, picking up one of these devices, one of these phones... Uh, they can go through that. If you if you if you pick up this phone and you say, "Oh, how exciting! I can interact with anything and anyone." I mean, any anyone from from all over the place, all over the place. That's how you look at it. Okay, you've opened the doors now to the technology of the geckos in the fourth dimension. I don't do that. <laughs> I am very controlled about who comes through this phone. They have to be a certain vibration. Plenty of people have known that. They have tried to call me when their vibration was low and the phone wouldn't work. Or my phone wasn't working. Or, or, or. I've got it set at a certain vibrational expectation. Sometimes they slip, but not very often. And no way do the geckos even come close. They're pretty much cut off. And when it comes to pigeons, all you got to do is say, well, amen's a good way of doing it. Now you've invited them in. But, which is ironic, considering that group started with the geckos. But anyway, it gets, it changed over a long time. It, the games change. <laughs> the players change. So, just like Democrats and Republicans in the United States used to be the exact opposite of what they are now. Yeah, go figure. They wonder why they can't communicate. But that's what took them to four, five, 3D, so it's all good. So anyway, what was I talking about? <laughs> oh, I do get to rambling, don't I? Okay, the threads between people. However, if you accept a thread, or if you send out a thread by, you know, that this is classic. It's rude to not notice someone if they've noticed you. So if you notice them and they've noticed you, it's rude to just turn away instantly. However, I do that all the time because I don't want to be bothered with uh, spinning back a thread. Now, I still th spin back threads, but I interact with so many people online all the time. And the trick here is that it, this is much more complex than what I can explain to you guys. But if you co connect with somebody, even if it's a thin thread, you're also attaching to everyone that they have ever interacted with. It's kind of whoever you are sleeping with, you're sleeping with everybody they've ever slept with. You've heard that before. Well, this is like that on multiple steroids. On crack, as they say. Anytime you interact with somebody, you interact with, that connects you with everything that they've ever react, interacted with. Everything that they've done, everything they've thought, everybody, anybody that they haven't spun, spun back the webs to, or the line, the threads to, which they don't, that means you're connected to all of that, too. Okay? Now, I know that's kind of hard to understand, but it's still the truth. So, that is one of the reasons why they say birds of a feather flock together. Because if you interact with somebody and you lock with them, and they have been interacting with somebody that's a very, very different vibration from you, you will react very strongly to that. Now, you probably are still attached to that, but you'll pull away from them physically, and you believe that if you're away from them physically, then that will reduce that uncomfortable feeling that you have about them. Now, that's in your belief system, even though there's no such thing as time and space. So, moving away from them will not lower it at all until you put in the belief that it does. Once you put the belief in that it does, then it works because you're a creator God and you get what you want. Okay? So, there's that. So, um, as I've said before, I spin off everything every day, several times a day, anytime I'm feeling uncomfortable. Um, I tend to stay in interacting with people longer than what I should. And it makes me sick, it makes me uncomfortable, it makes me weak. But I keep doing it. I don't know why. I guess I agreed to do it, right? <laughs> okay, now where were we? Uh, I'm... Do we have to try to remove their threads every night, too? Oh, I move, remove all threads every night. Yeah, I, I spin them all off. 
everything. I think I've removed threads before, but only with people I knew I wanted to cut ties with because I've never see because I never see them again. Oh, that's where I ended. Anyway, how do we navigate our relationship that we want enjoy value in a positive way energetically? Yeah, you've got a twisted now that's what you've been taught. You like I said, that you've been taught that this relationship gives you something. And you need to give something back in return, and that's what makes it valid. That's what makes it great, and that is a that is a faulty premise, and it is doomed to fail. Period. End of story. You become a complete person without the need of anything or anyone, and you can give the most magnificent creature to the world. Um, and it's just there. You become. A healthy complete individual which is what I strive for and um, interactions with you will be magnificent whether it is a, a, a your significant partner or someone in a checkout line it won't matter it won't matter it will be a magnificent interaction because you are all that you need and that's the way it, it is really okay um, and, and yeah, of course, our relationship. And that's the reason why where you say we want, enjoy, and value. Everybody does this in the beginning of a relationship. They have a new baby, and they get something from that. They hold that baby. They love that baby. That baby loves them back, or they presume that the baby loves them back. Then the baby grows up to be a real human, and they don't give them the love that they expect. And next thing you know, there's fighting going on. Same thing is true with a love relationship. You meet, everybody's on their best behavior. You're like getting all of this attention from this guy and you're giving all your attention to this guy and it's all love and rainbows, but it's all fake. It's all fake. It's not real love. It's not unconditional love. It's not even close to unconditional love. And, it, and it's doomed to fail. I mean, sure, it feels good, but it's a fake high. And that's all it is, is a fake high. Uh, that's because you don't, you you don't feel complete and total in yourself, and you need something or someone else to fulfill where you're lacking. So you fill that up. You can fill it up with relationships. You can fill it up. That's what women frequently do. You can fill it up with work, and historically, men frequently do that. Uh, this isn't absolutes. Guys don't beat me up for that it's just generally speaking and I'm dealing with seven billion people so give me a break here generally speaking that's how it's done women will frequently do relationships and men will frequently do work that's how it's done but no matter what you try to fill yourself up with it will never work it's why men it's never enough never enough money never enough recognition women they, the relationships are never enough. There's never enough children to give you what you need. That guy is never enough. is because it never will be. Because that, that emptiness that you want filled has got to be filled by you, not by those other things. Period. End of story. I don't care what anybody else says. Now, you can have fun with it. You can feel better with it. But they won't. They aren't long-lasting. They're... Uh, they're a very short-lived drug. Uh, but rather, we are uplifted and happy. And See, we are uplifted. See, there you gave yourself away. We are uplifted by X, Y, and Z. You don't need to be uplifted by anything or anyone else. You need to do the uplifting yourself. Don't put that on somebody else. That's way, In the first place, it's way too big of a... It's an impossibility for anyone else to do. Because they can't get in your mind. They don't know what you're thinking or feeling. You are a very complex person. Nobody can uplift you but you. Because you are that complex. Okay? And happy and can coexist quick, peacefully as long as we choose. The second you stop vamp vampirically needing other people, then peace will be here on this planet. The second that people quit needing to get from each other or take from each other, then peace is automatic. 
So if you want to know how to have peace on this planet, that's how you get peace on this planet. People start filling up their own needs by themselves, within themselves, by themselves, for themselves. Then there's peace on planet. Okay, that's it. That's enough. All right, guys, that's it for this one. Uh, yeah, I'll talk to you later. Love you. Huge hugs. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for the thumbs up. Thank you for watching the commercials and clicking on their little whatevers they have. Uh, that helps make me money. So, I'm up to $25 on YouTube. Yay! <laughs> but every dollar counts. It's important. It's like the lottery. So, thank you for all your support, guys. Huge hugs. Talk to you later. Bye now.